as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way, it starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that uh, you are viewing this telecast and also those that are in the congregation. I thank God for you that uh, you are able to, re to follow uh, in these uh, turbulent times. But the Lord is good. The Lord is gracious, loving, and kind to us. And so we want to continue sharing from the Word of God uh, uh, this day. And we pray that the Lord shall bless all of us. He shall, he shall bless you. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this uh, day that is a great day that you have uh, given us, uh, that we may rejoice in it and praise you and worship you. So as we share from your word to encourage us, Lord, we pray that you shall minister to us by your Holy Spirit. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Uh, today, I want us to share uh, from the Word of God. Again, uh, we are still dealing with focus. We, want, we don't want to lose focus in this season. It's extremely important that we know what we are focusing on. And we want to share from the Word of God uh, just to encourage us uh, as we continue uh, focusing on God, focusing on the Holy Spirit. Let's all share from the second uh, Samuel, second Samuel chapter 23. Verses 8 to, 8 to 17, a bit lengthy, but we shall just read quickly. Second uh, Samuel 23, verse 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Joseph, uh, Bashabeth, the Tachmonite, chief among the captains. He was called Adino, the Esnite, because he had killed 800 men at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, and the men of Israel and, uh, had retreated. He, he arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand st stuck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to plunder. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines, but, the, but, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines, so, that, so the Lord brought about a great victory. 
Then three of the thirty chief men went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David was said with a longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things were done by the three mighty men. Praise the Lord. David had uh, 30 mighty men who did great things. But we see these three were outstanding. One of them, Adino, the word says he killed 800 men, presumably alone, with the rest of the army having retreated. So the, I believe in that particular time, the battle was severe, and the people could, not, could no longer face the enemy. And they, they retreated. And this man moved forward. When things became very harsh, very difficult, this man moved forward. And he fought and fought and fought until his hand was weary. But the scripture is saying, when his hand was weary, his hand stuck to the, to the sword. That means the sword did not depart from his hand. He did not put down the sword. And the scripture is saying, that time, God gave great victory to Israel, not to this man. When God has chosen you and has appointed you, no turning back. Any, anyone who puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of God, Jesus said. No turning back. When you have a calling, a serious calling, it does not matter how serious the battle, and we are in a serious battle, no turning back. We must move forward with full assurance of success, of victory. And the victory is not about us. I believe this man knew his king well. He knew, he knew David well. And David was a man after God's own heart. So that is transmitted through David to the people that he was leading. And so when he was called into the army, he knew no retreat. He knew no turning back even when the battle became serious. And in this particular case, God joined him so that when he was weary, when he was not able, God, as it were, took over, only used him to finish that war and give victory to Israel. I do not know where you are as an individual. We are all called into the battlefield, those that are saved, when you left the kingdom of darkness, you declared war against that kingdom of darkness. And so you are on the Lord's side. You are fighting the, 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 the battle with the Lord. And the victory is not about you alone. The victory has to do with the master. The victory has to do with the calling. The victory has to do with God's presence. In these days, of coronavirus, God's presence is crucial. God's presence is needed. God's presence is all that we need. In his presence, all is well. So this man had a CV and a good CV, a serious CV. And then we see the other person, Eliezer. Again, Israel retreated. And he fought until his hand was weary, and his hand stuck to the sword. The other man killed 800 people. This one, the, the sword stuck into the, into the hand, and God gave victory. So these two men, 
the one who killed 800 men alone. This other person who fought alone and he became so weary fighting alone. God visibly came in so that the sword, his hand could not depart from, his, from the sword. And God gave victory. And I'm sure as you push forward in God, fight the battle on your knees. Call the Lord. Let the Lord know that the battle belongs to him, not to you, not to me. And this is a serious battle. Many nations are calling. Many nations are on their knees praying. We too must pray. We too must call upon the Lord, but not in panic. We must have full assurance of God's love, God's presence, God's grace, God's mercies. Even as we do what we have to do, we must have full assurance that surely God will come for us. That's why the scriptures are here for us. To be able to look at the lives of other people, how they walked, what they did, and what God did. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage us. We can still manage. The other person was Shama. So again, people fled. And he stationed himself in the ground with lentils and defended it. The word says the Lord brought about a, a great victory. Again, it's the, the Lord giving victory. This man, again, the people retreated because of the fear of the Philistines. And there was a provision. There was a piece of land with lentils. And people are retreating. And they are leaving the provision that God has given. They are running away, not able to defend what God has given. And this man, instead of running away with everybody else, he stationed himself right inside the field with lentils. And he fought the battle to protect, to protect the provision of the Lord. And I am sure God has made provisions for you. Many times I tell people, if you buy a piece of land, God has blessed you with a piece of land, put a fence around it, protect it. If you don't put a fence, even the boundary will be an issue. You are likely to see squatters encroaching into your piece of land or even animals. And even God said concerning Israel in Exodus chapter 23, that I will not give you the land at once. Not everything. Little by little shall I give you the land until you increase and process uh, and possess the land. Otherwise, the wild animals will come and, and take over. So God was going to make the provision according to your ability. And even the sharing of the land, if I may go out a little, the sharing of the, the land of the promise, Canaan, it was according to the number of men who qualified for war. Those are the people who are counted and qualified to, de to determine the size of the land that each tribe would get. The size, your size, your abilities. How many men of war do you have? According to those men that qualify to go for war, then you get a piece of land of, uh, of or equal to that, 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 that number. So our God has many ways. He does things and they make a lot of sense to you and to me. And so back to, the, to this man, Shama. He stepped into the uh, uh, land, the piece of land with lentils, defended it until God gave victory. You see, here on earth, God use, uses a man or a woman for that matter. There is what I have to do, there is what you have to do, and there is what God has to do. The other day, the, in the other service, we quoted the case of uh, uh, Joshua. When Amalek attacked in Exodus chapter 17, and Moses told Joshua, choose us men, choose men, men of war, go and fight. As for me, I will go to the hill and lift up the rod of God. And so we saw, we shared last time, and we saw that 
whenever the hand of Moses was up, Israel prevailed. When his hand went down, Amalek prevailed. That tells you the battle, you're not fighting alone, and you should never fight alone. You must engage God. We must engage God because victory has to do with God. And it is the people that know they are God, people that know God, that are relevant in our situation, in what we are saying, in what we are seeing. They are the ones who are relevant because the Lord does not want any hand. He wants a certain hand. The hand of a person that he knows is a prophet, is a pastor, is a minister, is a priest, and all of us are priests. A hand that is not defiled. That's the hand the Lord wants to see. That is the hand that moves God. And so, even as we cry, even as we call God, let's know that. Let's know that it is the hand, it is the people who have no barrier between them and God that will move God. And there, there are things that block our prayers. Sometimes we pray, and the prayers are hitting the ceiling and bouncing back on us. And one of the things is forgiving people. I don't want to go there this time. Jesus said, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, our Father in heaven will not forgive you your sins. So if God does not forgive you your sins, it means that you are disconnected. It means that when you pray, the prayers don't go anywhere. They hit the ceiling, and then they come back. I'm bringing that to say that we must know that it is not the volume of shouting that moves God. It is a condition of the heart. It is the person. It is the person mo that moves God, not the volume of lifting the voice. Yes, there is the crying, and God is a God of mercy. Let's not never forget God's mercies. God has mercies, and he gives mercy to whoever. And that is not your prerogative. Mercy is not your prerogative. It's not my prerogative. Mercy is the prerogative of God. He can show you mercy, or he, can, he may not show you mercy. It is his prerogative. But as for us, we want to do what we need to do so that we have the assurance that we have done our part. And then when we go before God, we are calling God, and we are saying, God, I have done my part. It's you now to move. That's where we want to be. And we can do that. When we learn him, we remain close to him. I said these people, these three people, of course there were, there, were, there were others, but we are concentrating on these three people. These are people that walked with David. As you may be aware, the sort of people that were recruited by David the first time he was running away from King Saul, these were people that were rejects, people that had debts, people that were stressed, People were, that were, were dis, uh, dis, uh, discontented because of situations in life. These were the people that, pers uh, that followed David. And these were the people that were transformed by this man, David, who was, a man, who was a man after God's own heart. He changed them. He transformed them. I want to believe that these three may have been part of that team, the earlier team, the initial team. Helpless people, hopeless people, People that had no direction, people that had no focus because nothing was working for them. They were full of debts. They were rejects. They, 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 were, they were unhappy concerning their situations. Then they followed David. And eventually, they are the mighty army who are fighting battles. One of them killing 800 people. The other one fighting alone when everybody is not there. And then he gets a victory. One person. And then everybody else comes just to, to take the, the, the spoils. So that's where we are coming from. People that know they are God. Now, these are three people that made a name. Three people that made a name. If you continue reading the scripture, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, from verse 17 continue, you will see that there were other people that were, did even greater things than these, these three people. They, they were there. But the scripture says very clearly, but they, that, that they did not, they did not measure 
to the same with the three that are mentioned here. And these three, uh, these three were out of 30, uh, that is 10%, it's a tithe. Huh? It's a tithe. They are the ones who were like the, in the inner circle. Jesus had 12 disciples, and three of them were in the inner circle. In the inner circle. So we see uh, in Luke chapter 22, verse 32, uh, Jesus is talking about Peter and addressing Peter, and he's saying, I have prayed for you. Or he was saying, Satan has asked for you that he may save you. But Jesus was saying, concerning Peter, one of the three in the, in the inner circle, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. You know Jesus could see that Peter was going to drift at, some, as a, at a certain stage and deny him. So he was saying, when you, you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But I have prayed for you. Can you imagine Jesus when he was still on earth praying for Peter? Asking God, God, remember this one who is among the three in the inner circle. I cannot lose this one. I cannot lose Peter. Lord, remember him. And I believe even today the Holy Spirit is agonizing. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father praying for the saints, praying for you that you should not fail, that your faith should not fail in this season of Corona. Your faith should not fail. fail. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If at that time, when he was still here on earth, he was praying for Peter, he prayed for Peter that his faith should not fail. He is still praying for you that your faith should not fail. Praise the Lord. Now, back to the three men. What is special about these three men? David, a man of war, a man who knew how to fight, he is in the stronghold. The Philistines are too much. They have occupied Bethlehem. So David in the strong, is, he's in the stronghold. And these three men happen to be present when David the king is crying. He's saying, if only who can, who can get me water from the well that is at the gate of Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is occupied. And David himself is a man of war, but he's in the stronghold. But these three men understood what everyone else did not understand. They understood that for them, the king is everything. They are called into the army by the king, and they are fighting for the king. And everything about their lives is about the king. But the king has a problem. He needs water. And he needs very specific water. This issue of Bethlehem, 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 Bethlehem. He needs water from Bethlehem. No other water. And I believe you also need that water. You, all, you need water from Bethlehem. However, these three men happened to be present, and they heard the cry. Without forming a committee, without uh, discussing, they took personal responsibility to get water to the king. And you know, under normal circumstances, fetching water is not for, for captains in war. People of, of, of positions, People that are supposed to command others. But this particular case, in this particular case, is a suicidal mission. It is, if I die, I die like Esther. I will go. If I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. And so they take the responsibility. They went through the, the, the camp of the P Philistines. This time they are not going to fight anybody. That is not the agenda. The agenda is the king needs water. That's the agenda. I don't know about you. And this is what made these three men to be outstanding, to have a special place even in the scriptures, because they heard the cry of the king and they responded. The king, our Lord Jesus Christ, has a cry. Even in times of corona, there are many people who may die and are dying without the knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
And we are busy with many programs. Busy. These three men stopped the, every other type of battle. They remained with only one battle. The cry of the king, the king needs water. No more fighting, we are going for water. Because the king needs water. They ignore their CVs concerning fighting, continuing fighting. They are now focused. And we keep talking about focus. They are focusing on water because the king needs water. And so they penetrated through the camp of the Philistines and went to Bethlehem, drew water, and they are on their way back. They want no battle with anybody at this particular time. They are not fighting for any glory or any victory. Their victory is to satisfy the king. They came and gave the water to the king. And the king, looking at, at what these people did, he did not even drink that water because he realized also that though he was king, there was a king above him. God. God who made this these three men be able to go to Bethlehem and come back without being, uh, being killed, then he offered that water as a sacrifice to that God. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you're imagining. I don't know what you're thinking. But I want to say, when we stop thinking about ourselves and we are swallowed up thinking about God, thinking about what is paining in Jesus' heart, why Jesus is in tears. If we swallow, we soak ourselves with that and focus on that more than our own agendas, more than what we want, we shall be better people. And God will not ignore that. The people that Jesus had, three of them, we see again in John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, this is John, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Can the Lord trust you that much? This is the question. Remember John would, would lean on Jesus' bosom. And then Jesus is on the cross in pain. He sees his mother. At that particular time, being human as we are, there was nothing he could do because he was human. He sees his mother and he sees John. He's telling his mother, woman, behold your son. He's telling John, behold your mother. He said nothing else. John understood. Do you think the Lord will understand you? Father, we want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you are gracious, you are loving. I thank you for the grace you give us to get your word. And I pray that somebody will clearly know you, come close to you, until you can trust him, you can trust us. And now, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. We shall meet again. Amen.